Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Wanted man remanded. Horace Kenton, a wanted man from Portland who was captured on February 16, was denied bail on Tuesday. Kenton was ordered to be remanded when he appeared in the Portland Parish Court in Port Antonio. He is to return to court in Buff Bay on March 4, 2022. Kenton is charged with larceny of a motor vehicle. Kenton, who was on Portland's most wanted list for offenses committed between September 25, 2021, in Snow Hill District in the parish, was nabbed by the police on Wednesday, February 16, 2022, in a targeted raid in Long Bay, Portland. Tommy Lee Sprotter Lawyers wants guards in prison altercation removed from front line. The legal team of Dancehall star Tommy Lee Sprotter is calling on the Department of Correctional Services to remove the officers from active duty who were involved in the controversial bus-up at the Torres Street Adult Correctional Center on Monday. The DJ was involved in a bloody altercation on Monday, which reportedly left this brought on soldier DJ unconscious and hospitalized at the Kingston Public Hospital. We have noted with a great concern an incident involving our client Leroy Russell. The matter is being investigated by Indicom, and we expect a thorough and swift investigation into the matter, attorney at law Donahue Martin reported. Martin called on the DCS to remove all the correctional officers involved in the altercation from frontline duty. The legal team is looking at all options. We are calling on the Department of Correctional Services to launch an internal investigation into the matter and immediately pull the officers involved from acting duty pending the outcome of the investigative process, Martin stated. Chop them up. Later in the stooping ground of the St. Catherine-based Klangsman gang, which dismembered bodies of disloyal gangsters, was the ultimate means of sending a message to those who had turned against accused leader Andre Blackman Bryan after his incarceration in 2018, according to City Post, the shadowy Kingsman gangster who is yet to be unmasked. City Post, one of the 33 alleged members of the criminal organization now on trial at the Home Circuit Court in downtown Kingston before Chief Justice, gave his chilling proposal during a 45 minutes phone call between himself, Brian, the sole female accused Stephanie Christie, otherwise Carl Mumma, and witness number one, a former gang member turned state witness. The call is one of several now being played into the records of the court, which had been secretly taped by the witness who was working with the police unbeknownst to his allies. According to City Post, it would be a mistake to restore those he described as Judas, biblical figure who betrayed Jesus Christ. If we draw them in, you're going to have problem like this. If you deal with them so, we now go catch them. We want to catch them. We now litter the place like we should have done it. Them to find a half a body, not just head alone or headless body. People are wonder where the rest of the body, he said with relish. Two foot and one waist, they must search for the head and chest and the hand them. And we now kill them and dismantle them body. We are do it live. Ah, so we are going to do it parry. Drive fear. Drive intimidation. People are going to say, a madman them here. A psyche we are used. Yet, set the place. I want different way we are create this so. Added the man who, in a previous phone call, which Christie and the witness had adopted the moniker Lucifer. The witness had told the court that City Post adopted the name when carried out extortion activities. The gory plan by the man who was, at the time, behind bars for another matter were all sanctioned by Christie, who is said to be a minister of religion. At one point during the call, she interrupts his musing with a shriek of excited laughter. So me want chop chop them up. Think I hold them ago style we. Think I hold them ago style we, she stated. City Post, in the meantime, claimed that he had been the one to kill fathers of two men one of whom is on trial as well, the accused Pete Miller, alias Smokey. Last week, the court heard that Smokey, along with his brother, Marco Miller, alias Hezzy, had been marked for death by the remnants of the gang, loyal to Brian for turning their heels against him. A mimic them now on crock, unidentified individual father. Him and Smokey in the same boat with me, and me murder them father. Them are going like them are idiots, he declared. Last week, in a recording played to the court, Sitipus gave his prescription for the treatment of the dogs 
versus the drunk was. The two categories into which we had divided the gangsters who were taking sides. Allah who you see at its side, it in a them blood, them a corruption, you can't deal with them too, and them same way. When you can't stone the dog, you have to shoot the drunk row. As so you have to deal with them one day from Spanish town, he stated then. He further declared that when the gang regained its footing with its leader back in the saddle, a new bread of members would have to be recruited. In the meantime, Christie informed the group that she had been questioned by the police. She said the lawmen believed Brown had brought an Audi motor car and were also investigating his dealings with a particular hardware company in Spanish town. Say you buy the car them in a my name? Me say why the man go buy the car them and don't buy a house? No rent the man pay? And if he never did local music, how the man would survive, she stated. Christy who maintained that she gave the police no ammunition for their case against her alleged leader, further said the interrogation did not foster her, as she knew they had no evidence on which to charge him. G2K General Secretary to represent JLP in Cambridge Division, St. James in next local polls. General Secretary of Generations 2000 G2K, businessman Jevin Baker, has been selected to represent the Jamaica Labour Party JLP in the Cambridge Division in St. James when the next local government election is called. The seat was held by JLP's Homer Davis, who successfully contested the St. James Southern constituency in the 2020 general elections. Delivering the keynote address at the G2K Western Chapters meeting held at the Montego Bay Community College last week, Davis, who is the Minister of State in the office of the Prime Minister West, through his support behind Baker. Javin has decided to join me in South St. James, and I gave him the best and the strongest division in South St. James. That is the division that I have marshaled and I have commanded for 13 years, and so I expect him to do well whenever the local government election is called, said Davis, who is also a Deputy General Secretary of the JLP. Meanwhile, Baker, who eluded confidence to win the seat during the next local government poll, told reporters that he is committed to follow in the footsteps of his predecessor to provide strong representation for the citizens of the division. I am confident that I will be victorious whenever the polls are called. Thereafter, I will follow in Minister Davis' footsteps in the service to the division. The G2K General Secretary promised, G2K is the young professional affiliate of the JLP. Last week's meeting was held under the theme how the West was won, development in the West. Reddington McIntyre is expected to represent the PNP, People's National Party, in the next local government elections. Big Repair Bill The damage to roads and other public infrastructure in three parishes, due to heavy rain and flooding, has left millions of dollars in damage according to local government and world development minister Desmond McKenzie. The infrastructural damage between Portland St. Mary and St. Anne is going to run in excess of $150 million, and the assessment has not yet been completed, Mackenzie declared, during a recent meeting at the Port Maria Transportation Center in St. Mary. That was the first time the minister was publicly putting a dollar figure to the damage. He also told residents that the repairs will not be done overnight. While we are looking at the infrastructure development, let me just say to everybody, that there is no quick fix to the problems that you face and don't let anybody fool you and tell you that in two months' time the problems will be solved, not true, he declared. During a previous tour of the three parishes, Mackenzie in interviews with journalists promised that he would have taken the matter regarding infrastructural damage to the attention of the cabinet, which met on Monday. I want to give the residents the assurance that the government of Prime Minister Andrew Holness is committed to fixing these infrastructural problems, he said then. It is clear that St. Mary and St. Anne are the two parishes that have suffered extensive physical infrastructure damage. I visit some areas where I am very, very concerned. Not concerned about the condition of the roads alone, but concerned about the safety of the residents using those to fear, especially at night, added Mackenzie. He further stated that temporary solutions would be put in place to allay the fears, especially regarding safety. According to Mackenzie, the next hurricane season, June 1 to November 30, 
is among factors that will be considered when repairs are being done. So we know we will have to look at how we are going to approach the upcoming hurricane season and to put a list of priority areas in place once we identify those areas that we consider to be areas of priority when we make our report back to cabinet we will detail our report in such a way that we deal with the issues based on priorities mckenzie stated the torrential rainfall and flooding caused extensive damage to infrastructure in the three parishes and damage to crops and livestock agriculture minister pernell charles jr has estimated the damage to crop and livestock at almost $77 million. BOJ on track for digital currency rollout. The Bank of Jamaica BOJ says it is still on track for the rollout of the central bank digital currency CBDC during the first quarter of 2022. Deputy Governor with responsibility for banking, currency operations and financial markets, Natalie Haynes, said that several key outputs are being targeted for the period. According to a release, there are the passage of amendment to the Bank of Jamaica Act to make CBDC legal tender and the entity the sole issue of increasing the number of deposit-taking institutions, DTIs, onboarding clients and ramping up the communication campaign to this end, and the BOJ completing its independent third-party quality assurance assessment of the system the result of which will be made public. Haynes, who was speaking during the BOJ's digital quarterly media briefing on Monday, said that the National Commercial Bank, NCB, remains the sole CBDC wallet provider and has already onboarded approximately 300 small merchants, inclusive of barbers, hairdressers, vendors, and cookshop operators. She said that the entity will focus on getting more individual and small merchant clients on board during the quarter. Haynes also shared that BOJ is testing the system with another DTI that acquainted the hardware for Republic of Ireland-based technology provider eCurrency Mint Incorporated, which was selected to support CBDC project implementation. So hopefully, by the end of this quarter, the DTI will be ready to onboard customers. But we need more DTIs to come in so that CBDC can be more widely available to customers, she pointed out. CBDC is a digital form of central bank issued currency and is therefore legal tender. It is a flat currency, which means it can be exchanged dollar for dollar with actual cash and is issued to licensed DTIs on a wholesale basis. Individuals, households, and businesses can use it to pay for goods and services as obtained with cash. The BOJ said that the benefits to be derived for citizens, businesses and the government from the adaptation and introduction of a viable digital currency solution include increased financial inclusion and providing another means of efficient and secured payments. Additionally, the BOJ said that the CBDC represents an opportunity for DTIs to improve cash management processes and costs. People who already have bank accounts will be able to automatically obtain a CBDC account. Jamaica reports 41 new COVID cases, 8 deaths. Jamaica reported 41 new cases of COVID-19 and 8 fatalities on Monday, according to the latest statistics from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. This pushed the total number of cases of the virus since the start of the pandemic to 127,706 and the death total to 2,795. Of the newly reported cases, there were 25 females and 16 males, with ages ranging from 1 year to 82 years. The cases were recorded in St. Catherine 9, St. James 9, Westmoreland 8, St. Anne 6, Clarendon 3, Hanover 2, Kingston and St. Andrew 2, Portland 1 and Trelawney 1. Meanwhile, latest victims include two females, ages 60 and 81, and an 87-year-old male from Hanover, two women, ages 46 and 79, and a 54-year-old male from Westmoreland are also among the latest deaths. From Kingston and St. Andrew, a 77-year-old woman was the latest fatality. Six of the deaths were recorded between August and October 2021, while the other two were recorded in February of this year. The country also recorded 166 new recoveries 
bringing the total number of recoveries to 75,445. The positivity rate for the latest round of testing was 4.4%. There are 182 people hospitalized, six of them critically ill. There are 1,101 confirmed active cases on the island. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.